This has got to be a feature that a lot of people have been waiting for ever since Unify first announced they're going to be releasing a NAS. And in this video, we're going to look at Unify Drive 3.0, and that is storage pools. As always, we'll take a look at the UI website and look at the improvements and what actually is there. And then we will dive into the actual software itself and see what we can and can't do with it. So as I mentioned, the first thing is, is added support for creating multiple storage pools. Now this means you can start having different types of drives within your NAS to create different storage pools. So you could have something with HDDs, for example, and something with SSDs and create two different storage pools within them to use for different circumstances. The first one to take a look at is the original storage will become a legacy storage pool, storage pool one, and you won't be able to create multiple RAID groups with it. And again, we'll have a look at what multiple RAID groups are within the video. To create RAID groups within storage pools, each new group must contain at least two drives for data protection. So that will be RAID 10 that you can use across two different drives. And there are specific RAID conversions that you can do without losing any of your data. And that will be RAID 6 to RAID 5, which is only for RAID groups currently containing 1 to 3 drives. And then you can go from RAID 5 to RAID 6 for RAID groups that currently contain 1 to 6 drives. There is an added support for creating multiple RAID groups within a storage pool, which I kind of covered a little bit earlier. And they've added support for a global hotspot for a storage pool as well. And again, we'll take a look at how all of this works. There's an improved admin and user experience, and then a whole bunch of things around remote access, backup and restore, and storage health reporting. They've also moved the storage configuration from the Unify OS section to the drive application itself. Let's start by going into the Unify drive. And initially I had two hard drives populated in there, HDD one and two, and they were just two 10 terabyte drives that I used to back up most of my content that I create. I've then recently added some additional storage within there. There's a third 10 terabyte drive in there, and I've popped in four four terabyte HDDs in there as well. Now this can also be SSDs if you're looking to do something like that. Unfortunately, I don't have enough SSDs to be able to do this, but that's what I have set up at the moment. You can see it's fully operational and my current RAID type within that storage pool is RAID 1 and the target is to push it to RAID 5. This might have come in a previous version but definitely in this one you have the option to be able to search in drive so you have a new shared drive that you can just click here to create. If you want to filter by a certain image type or list view or if you want to sort by something specific you have all these options right here and when you click on one of the drives itself you have the stuff that you've seen previously so the files and folders you now can see what storage pool it's sat in if you want to enforce the storage limit and encrypt the drives so we go across to the control plane and the bit that we want to go to is storage now this is where the fun begins there's three different diagrams at the top of the screen to give you a quick, quick explanation as to what's actually happening. So we have a standard RAID configuration versus multiple RAID configuration. What this allows you to do is to create multiple RAID groups to maximize the capacity that you can have on your drive. So if you've got different size drives like they show here, Previously, if you had a mix of 10, 8, 6, 4 drives, it would take the lowest number. So if you had four 10 terabyte drives and one 4 terabyte drive, you would only be able to use a 4 terabyte drive on that single RAID configuration. However, now with multiple RAID configurations, you can split that out and get the most out of your drives. You have the option for multiple storage pools. Again, nicely depicted right here. Create multiple storage pools with different RAID groups to meet diverse needs. So again, if you want something that needs a protect, that's very critical data that needs two HDD failure protections, failure protection, or if you need better performance. And then finally, multiple storage pools. And finally, multiple storage pools with the global hot spare. So what this allows you to do is pick one drive that can be used as a global hot spare. And then that gives you an additional spare to any of your storage pools in case they lose a drive. So scrolling a little bit further down, we have the storage pools and this is the first one. So straight away, as soon as you go into your storage pool, it says legacy storage pool limitation, RAID group expansion isn't supported, mixing HDDs and SSDs may impact performance. We recommend backing up your data to another server and removing the legacy storage pool and then creating a new storage pool and restoring your data. I'm not going to do this one in this video, maybe one for another video if you want to know how to do this, but I would have to take the data off the drive, recreate the storage pool and then bring it back on again. You can see the current protection that I'm using, which is RAID Group 1 with 1 HDD. Now this is the RAID Group 1 and you can see we can't mix and match drives on here, it says it's incompatible, but if we tick RAID Group 3 we can see that then changes to RAID 5 and we can click save. The only thing I'm not sure at the moment is if you add that to your pool, do you lose your existing data? I need to test that to find out. So maybe something I'll leave a comment down in the comments after to let you know 
what that is. We have a list of drives down here that are installed. And if we scroll across to the right, we have all the storage pool options right here. So storage pool one, RAID group one, and it shows you, and you can assign a hot spare. The moment we've kind of all been waiting for is obviously creating the storage pool. And when you go to create that, you're greeted with this RAID type straight away. So you have basic protection where you can lose one drive, advanced protection, which is RAID six, where you can lose two drives, but you need a minimum of four drives, or you can have better performance, which is RAID 10. Now we have the four four terabyte drives. If I select two, if I select one, it says you need at least one more for fault tolerance. So if we select two and we scroll up, we can see that we have RAID 10. We can do that one. So if I select all four drives down, we have the four four terabyte drives down here. And if I select all four of them, we can see it gives us an estimate as to what those drives are gonna be. So if you have something like RAID 5, where you can have four drives, so four times four is 16, but you have one spare, so 12 terabytes. We have RAID 6, where you have two fault tolerances, so you actually half that, so you have eight terabytes, or you have RAID 10, where you're mirrored across two different drives and you have two spares also as well. So that also gives you eight terabytes. So you have a few different options as to what you want to set up. I'm gonna choose RAID 6, but also keep in mind what we said about creating multiple RAID groups. So if you wanted to create a second RAID group on here, let's say you had two drives, for example, you could then select another two drives, but it tells me right here that we need at least four drives for RAID 6. And if I selected RAID 5, it's gonna tell me, sorry, there aren't enough drives, you need at least three drives. So we don't have enough drives to make that happen. One thing to keep in mind, if you select RAID 10, then you will only be able to create one RAID group. You cannot create multiple RAID groups with RAID 10. So if I have that selected at the moment and I try and click create RAID group, it says better performance RAID 10 only supports one RAID group. And that's all we would be able to do. So we select the drives that we need, choose RAID 6, and then we're gonna click create. And we'll proceed, we'll reformat and proceed. And then that's gonna start creating that storage pool that you can see up here. So we'll leave this for a few moments. We'll let it format the drives and get set up and then we'll come back and take a look. It took about five and a half hours and you'll see the screenshot popping up on the screen now. But now that that's complete, we're now fully operational. And you can see right here, we have the storage pool two, which is all set up and ready to go. I can create an additional RAID group should I wish to do so or if I want to remove the storage port, I can also do that as well. Now, the final spare drive that I have, I can show you as an example, is we can assign as a hot spare. So I'm going to go and click this, and that's going to go off now and assign that as a global hot spare. And then a few moments later, that's assigned as a global hot spare, and you can remove it if you wish to do so. Creating a new shared drive now, you can see we have the option of storage pool one or two. So I can create a new IW demo, for example, in storage pool two. And just like everything else, you can just select the individual storage pool. So that's where the differences start coming in. And there we go right there, that IW demo has been created. We can see the storage pool and we can see there's a limit on there as well. So if we wanted to limit this to say 50 gigabytes, we can do, we'll click save and then that will then go off and update. And there we go, that pretty much wraps up the update for Unify 3.0. Much needed update. The storage pools have been something that have been asked for a long time. You can now definitely do a lot with this and having the global hot spare gives you that extra layer of redundancy as well. If there's anything specific you want to see in future videos, again, let me know down in the comments below. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.